Hi folks and welcome to the, the next video in the Cathay series. Now this in this video we're going to look at the Inquisition, the mountaintop citadel of Montségur and how the, the Nazis became involved later in the story. So we looked earlier on about how the, about the Cathay beliefs in the first video uh, and how the, the um, the beliefs of the Cathars and the uh, dualistic thought began early, early on in the Middle East, and then grew massively until it took over the the Languedoc pretty much uh, in a massive, massive way. But then they looked at how the Catholic Church responded to this, uh, believing to this the Catholic the Cathars to be heretics, and by um, introducing the Albigensian Crusade, which basically murdered thousands and thousands of Cathars. So now we're going to look at what happened after the death of Sam de Montfort in Toulouse when he, when, he fought, when he was killed during the siege. Because after that, pretty much the, the situation uh, lost its ferocity and it died off more, more or less. And then in 1227, a new pope was elected in Rome, and this was Pope Gregory the Ninth. Now he was a great warrior uh, about the heresy situation, but his idea was to introduce heresy courts, which you would have to uh, go in front of and prove your innocence. And if you didn't prove your innocence, again you were you were for the fires. So this was called the Inquisition. And it arrived in the early uh, 1230s in the Languedoc. And it moved through the Languedoc like a plague, burning thousands and thousands in its wake. Uh, in 1233 is when everything really started off. And one early case uh, was that a lady in, in Toulouse was already on a deathbed and she didn't have long to live at all. And she called for the Cathar perfect to come and give her the consolamentum or the last rites. Now, a member of her household went off to, to the, the, the Cathar house where the perfects lived and brought the Cathar perfect and he produced and he, and he did, he performed the, the last rites for the consolamentum and then went away as secretly as he had arrived. And then another member of the family went off to the Dominican monastery because it was the Dominicans that were in charge, really, of the Inquisition. And there was the Inquisitor there named William Pellison. And they couldn't resist a, a, a heresy were acting so, happening so near to them. He was sat there, it was about midday, and he was sat there with his fellow uh, priests and monks. So we see, he went off to the, to the uh, lady who was dying, and one of his staff said, the Lord uh, Bishop has arrived. Now she obviously thought that this was the Cathar Perfect again. So she responded to him in, as he was a Cathar Perfect, something which of course the, the um, Pelican didn't put right. So she basically incriminated herself by responding as a Cathar. He, so Pelican then, the Inquisitor, the Inquisitor, declared her guilty of heresy. They tied her and strapped her to the bed, carried the bed out beyond the city walls and set fire to it, bed lady and all, and basically murdered her. And having murdered a lady, which was pretty much in the last few hours anyway, they went back to the, uh, the monastery and finished their dinner. Now, it became, in the, a few years later, around the, uh, the 1240s, uh, the Inquisition had been going all that time, and we, all that, nearly nearly ten years, and a lot of the Cathars had dispersed, hid and gone underground, but two hundred of them had found safety in the mountaintop citadel of Montségur, a place where five hundred people were actually living there at that time. Two hundred being Cathar perfects. Now it was in 1243, in the late spring, that the the armies of the Pope arrived and set siege around the base of Montségur, and everybody who's seen Montségur can imagine what a task that was, because it is an amazing sight, so high up on the, uh, on top of the, just like a big rock, a massive rock. Now, the, 
So the cathode perfects were happy there and they thought they'd be safe because it was pretty impregnable. And they also thought that Raymond of Toulouse was going to arrive with reinforcements because they thought he was at, in, in Rome negotiating with the Pope. But in actual fact, Raymond, Toulouse, Raymond of Toulouse had, had, had changed sides and uh, joined the side of the church, or the Catholic Church. So the bombardment of the citadel carried on for months and months and months. And during this time, a pair of Cathoys managed to secrete themselves down the sheer rock face uh, through the, through the uh, surrounding armies, who basically were friends with the Cathoys anyway, so whether because they were locals and they just let them through. So what were they carrying? That's the question. Well, they would have had wealth. They would have had the, some of the secrets of the Cathoys. Uh, the main secrets may be the early, early manuscripts, maybe even the Book of Love. And they thought also that Solomon's Temple secrets were in Montsegur as well, so whatever was in there, really even the Holy Grail, they were transferred uh, out of the castle, just, but just with two people, the amount that two people could carry, into the, into the surrounding co countryside where there was a fortified cave or a spoogler, and this is where everything was hid. So anyway, uh, morale wasn't at its best, as you can imagine, because they were stuck in the, in, in the mountain top. The, the weather was getting worse and worse, and no uh, reinforcements had arrived. Then, eventually, on March the 1st, 1244, a single horn would sound from the citadel wall. The grueling siege was over. Now, all negotiations were swift and to the point because it was getting cold and I think even the armies of the Pope wanted to go home. So the result of the negotiations were that all but the Cathar perfects could go free. Well, they would have to sit with the Inquisition first, prove their innocence. But the Cathar perfects had to renounce their faith or be burned alive. And also at this point, a highly unusual two-week truce was uh, announced, which straight led up to the, the spring equinox. Now, why they would do this after such a months of terrible bombardment and hunger, why would they give them two weeks extra? This is a, a mystery which will just reverberate through history, and we will never know. But what we do know is that four more Cathar perfects managed to find their way down the back of that sheer mountainside, in with more of the of the uh, mystical secrets and wealth. And treasures of Solomon's temple of the, and of the Cathars to the same cave and hide it away, could bury, this, bury it with stones so it'll never be found again. So it was um, dawn on the 16th of March when 220 Cathars, 20 of these just taken, just newly taken a consolamentum, they would have been the army officers that, that were up there. Uh, they walked down the, martyr, the, the mountain barefoot and in coarse garments, where they met Hugh uh, Arkis, who was the, government of, the governor of Carcassonne, and Peter Amiel, the Archbishop of Nabon, and they were waiting there with murderous intent. They led the Cathars onto a, a palisade uh, full of full of uh, firewood, uh, which was pitched in oil. They were tied to stakes like wild boar to a spit, and of course they, they set fire to the uh, to the, the whole lot. And uh, this is where the the main story of the Cathars ends. But uh, as they were screaming, and as they died, as the flames took hold, the sounds of the Cathar. Uh, the Catholic monks singing and rejoicing got louder and louder and uh, so they couldn't hear the, the Cathars' uh, screams or so it's told. So this was a wonderful day for the Roman Church uh, and the Catholic Guilhem, uh, who recorded the proceedings, wrote to the Pope saying, refusing the con conversion to which they were exhorted, they were burned alive in an exclosure made of sticks and stakes which was set fire and dispatched them to the fires of Tartarus. I take visitors up there now and, you, and at some days you can really feel the atmosphere, how something so tragic could have taken place in such a beautiful, wonderful landscape. Very, very spiritual experience. 
Well, that isn't the end of our story. Obviously, then we have the we have the treasures lost in the hills. So, what happened to that? So, to continue this this part, we have to move forward seven hundred years to 1934, five years before the Second World War began. Now, German SS Reich Führer Heinrich, Heinrich Himmler had chosen Wurvenberg Castle uh, as the headquarters of his SS, and basically uh, his, the Camelot for his quest for the Holy Grail, because Himmler saw himself as a, a King Arthur figure, uh, a figure of the Teutonic Knights and the Knights of the Round Table. And every year, 12, 12 leading members of the SS Gruppenführer would meet around a huge oaken table, just in the way that Arthur would have done all those so long ago. And in 1940, he incorporated the Annan Arbor into the SS. This was a, a, a unit which was designed for the searching out of occult knowledge, and he sent them off throughout the world, including the longer dock and the search for the, the Holy Grail and the, the secrets of the Cathars and of Solomon's Temple. Now, the author and researcher Otto Rahm had come to the attention of Himmler, particularly because of this book, which is uh, the quest for the, for the Holy Grail. In the book, uh, Rahm speaks of his love for the ideology of the Cathars and the whole, the whole belief of the Cathar system. He loved the idea of the troubadours and uh, the poets of the time which would go from castle to castle singing and, and doing their poetry and just bringing love and uh, just a wonderful time. He, he loved that, that whole thing. But he also made a connection between Parsifal, uh, obviously of, the, of the, the Grail story, and Monsalvat, the place of the Holy Grail. And it was this that Himmler was particularly interested in. So he, he, adopted, he, he incorporated um, initiated uh, Ron into the SS in 1936 with special duties to himself as a, as a cult advisor which is something really that uh, Ron was not really cut out for he, he was not a, na a natural Nazi at all otherwise he wouldn't have been loving the idea of the, the, the troubadours and the poets and the Cathars so what he did he mistakenly let his opposition to the Second World War uh, be known, and he resigned his commission in 1939, something which basically you're not supposed to do. It was only a month later that he was found dead, frozen on the side of an Austrian mountain. Of course, the, uh, it was said that he was um, that he had suicided himself, but of course there was no 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 in, inquisition into the inquisition into this at all, and um, well, make of that what you will, as they say. But uh, Ron does, does carry on through, uh, through Hollywood and Steve, as a, the inspiration for Steven Spielberg's uh, Indiana Jones. So he will be remembered. So in um, March 1944, this is exactly 700 years after the burning uh, of the Cathars, military units arrived at the base of Montsegur where the Pope's armies were, led, led by... Otto Scorzoni, or the Scar. Now he had orders from, him, from Himmler to follow the, the in the in the wake of Ron's work and uh, find the, the secrets of the Cathar. So Ron sent out Nazi scouts throughout the area. Sorry, not Ron. Uh, Scorzoni sent out scouts uh, in the in the area, and they found the remains of some staircases or some steps on the back of the mountain beneath Montségur. This would have been the place where in the siege of 1244 that the Cathars escaped taking the secrets of the, of the Cathars to, to hiding. So they followed the staircase into the, into the surrounding countryside. The scouts spent a lot of time trying to find where this cave was and eventually they did. They removed all the boulders that were blocking the cave and there it was, the, the secrets of uh, the treasure of the Cathars. Scazzoni sent a telegram to Germany just saying Eureka, the one word, we found it, signed Sky. 
the reply came, uh, watch the um, watch the skies tomorrow at midday. So this was um, exact March the sixteenth, twelve forty four, exactly seven hundred years since two hundred and twenty cathodes had walked to the death down the mountain top, down from the mountain top uh, citadel. That. And also there was a group, a large group of people that had gathered just to, just to celebrate that actual event. And a plane flew, a light plane flew over the, the top of Mount Segura and drew a, a Celtic cross in sky smoke. So this was a massive fortune now in the hands of the German army, the German forces, the German state. Enough maybe to fund the world war. But that's another story, but we haven't finished this one yet because uh, there is one more Cathar to speak of called William Bill Bast. He's, a, he's a, another character, but another character for another day because that's as far as we're going to go with it today. So please, I hope you're enjoying uh, these videos. Please do click on subscribe on the little, on the little bell next to it so you'll be told in future videos you'll be informed of them uh, thank you so much for everybody so far who's found the link to my paypal below clicked in sent me a donation in these strict times when uh, we can't work otherwise every little bit is very much appreciated it really is so thank you for listening and i'll see you all in the next video